You may already be familiar with the concept of a three-phase energy data logger that requires only a single voltage connection. But if you're not, you're probably wondering how it can possibly work. Before we get to that, it's worth briefly summarising the advantages of this approach, which can really be summed up in a single word, safety. Possibly two words, in which case safety is joined by easy. With only one voltage connection to make, we can make use of a standard wall socket outlet, which is of course both safe and easy to do. As far as our voltage connections are concerned, we just plug the unit in and that's it. The wall socket provides both the power supply and the reference or measured voltage for the instrument. It means that we can usually make all the necessary connections safely, without shutting supplies down or exposing any live terminals. That in turn means that we can make measurements or carry out surveys which would be impossible or at the very least difficult to do with a traditional logger. If you haven't already viewed the SPC Pro video, it shows exactly how the instrument is used and just how easy it is. So far so good. A wall socket connection is definitely easier and safer than live terminals and a set of crocodile clips. But surely this is going to have an impact on data quality. In fact, the SPC Pro provides extremely accurate results for three-phase energy, normally measured in kilowatt hours, and it's able to do this for a couple of very simple reasons, as we'll see, combined with some clever software, of course. It differs from most three-phase data loggers because, generally speaking, the measurement of active energy, otherwise known as kilowatt hours, on three-phase supplies requires the measurement of all three voltages and all three currents, six channels in all. This is because the energy calculation for three-phase systems comprises three distinct elements for each phase. That is actually nine values in total, if we include the phase angles. And if you're wondering what they are, don't worry. The diagrams below will make things a bit clearer. But for now, we can just say they're the relationship between volts and amps in an AC system. The diagram shows the three-phase voltage and current elements as vectors, and we can see that there is a 120 degree split between the voltage vectors and the current vectors too if we're lucky. In fact, we are usually unlucky and the vector angles for current will be different, but we can rely on the voltage almost always being split by exactly 120 degrees between phases, which we can use to our advantage. You may also have noted that the voltage vectors are all the same length, but the current ones are not, which is also relevant to how many values we have to measure. This is because the voltage level is about the same on all three phases, but the current levels are different depending on the load on the supply. We'll come back to this in a minute. Now, if we put the current diagram on top of the voltage diagram, we can see how the mysterious phase angles are measured. Here we can see the current has moved so that it is lagging the voltage by 30 degrees on all three phases, actually a power factor of 0.87. This is something that happens when the load consists of an electric motor, for example. And now it's got a bit more complicated as each phase is lagging by a different amount. Predictably though, where building loads are concerned, that's the normal situation, so we have to be able to deal with it. A traditional six-channel logger can see the varying phase angles because it measures all three voltages and all three currents, so it can combine those elements to calculate the kilowatt hours. It seems that to be able to calculate the total power and energy in the system, we have to know the levels of each voltage phase, the levels of each current phase, and the phase angles between each pair. But actually some of these values can be accurately predicted, so we don't have to measure them. As we've already seen, the voltage vectors are basically fixed at 120 degrees, and as the voltage level will be almost the same on all three, they are all the same length. This means we really only have to measure one, because we know where the other two will be, and how long they will be. We can actually get all the information we need by measuring the three currents and the three phase angles of those currents referenced to the single voltage phase we have. If we modify our diagram a little to show the measurements we actually took, it looks like this. Now if we put our other voltage phases back where we know they are going to be and how long they are, we can calculate the shaded area to obtain the angles for each phase. This is how the SPC Pro provides accurate kilowatt hour values with only one voltage reference and it is accurate enough to be around 1% of scale or better in most situations. This table shows a comparison with the UK tariff electricity meter. 
Clearly we've made a couple of assumptions to get this far, so let's just review those and look at the impact they might have on our measurements. We've assumed that all three voltage values are the same. Our voltage vectors were all the same length, but in fact there is likely to be a small difference between them. However, on a main supply it is small, typically 2 or 3 volts or less, which is less than 1%. And as you can see, it has very little impact on the accuracy of the overall energy or kilowatt hour value. We also said that we could rely on the voltage phases being split by 120 degrees, and that is actually an even smaller compromise, because this value really doesn't change by very much unless the supply has some real problems, in which case you really need a power quality analyzer, not an energy logger. Considering how much easier and safer an SPC Pro is to use than a traditional crop clip instrument, and how accurate it is, we think these are acceptable assumptions. But there is one more thing to consider. For the above method to work, we have to know which of the three voltage phases we have actually measured. Our diagrams all show phase one as the measured phase, but that isn't guaranteed by any means. The operator is simply going to use the nearest available wall socket and will normally not know to which of the three available phases it is connected. The SPC doesn't worry about this, but our PC software, PowerPack Pro, does. It checks all the phase angle data measured by the instrument during the download process and compares the values to find a best fit against the measured voltage. This allows it to identify the voltage phase actually used. It can do this because power factor values, phase angle by another name, fall into a predictable range in the vast majority of cases. Most building loads run at a power factor of about 0.9 for example. And this means that the automatic process is almost foolproof. However, there will of course be very rare occasions where the true power factor falls outside the expected range, when measuring a very lightly loaded electric motor for example. But this is not a problem. If it ever happens, the user can manually shift phases after download to correct the situation, and once the correct phase has been found, the same level of accuracy is always delivered. If you have any questions or would like some more details on how it works, please email us on safeandsimple at lcomponent.co.uk and we'll do our best to help.